In August 2005, in August 2005, we were getting ready to build this multi-million rand complex right here on this site. The earthworks had already been completed. We had paid for the job cash. The land was all leveled out. Everything was beautifully ready for the contractor to move on site and start construction. And on a Friday in August 2005, I received a phone call from Pastor Peter Cox, who was then my right-hand man, and now Pastor Johnny has taken over from his position, and he serves me and Pastor Bev in that capacity. He called me on the Friday and said, Pastor Theo, we need to go ahead with the construction. Can I have permission? Now, I had already signed documents giving Pastor Peter Cox power of attorney over this issue, that he would be able to sign the contract with the construction company in my place, sign my name. And uh, so he said, can I go ahead and sign the contract on your behalf to start construction? And I said to him, let me pray about it. Call me on Tuesday and I will let you know. So I spent uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday praying about this decision to go ahead and spend millions of rands, millions of dollars on this huge facility. And uh, so he called me as arranged on Tuesday morning, my time in San Antonio, Tuesday afternoon, Johannesburg time. And uh, when the phone rang, it was Pastor Peter Cox on the other side of the line. And he tells me that he and Rob Palmer, who were uh, both on the finance board, were in a separate room and that in the boardroom were waiting for my authorization, all the church lawyers, all the church designers, design team, all the church architects, and all the church engineers, civil engineers, electrical engineers, a whole bunch of different engineers, plus the project manager. And all the, and the construction company directors and all their engineers and project managers were all in the boardroom waiting for me to say yes so that contracts could be signed and that the company that was already awarded the contract then, we had already awarded to them, they would then immediately sign contracts right there and then with all subcontractors who would then move everything on site. Tons of steel were standing ready to move on to this land and all sorts of building material and about 200 to 300 workers were standing by to come and start construction. And they had a limited time according to the contract to get this building up. All right. So, uh, I had already received my instruction from God. I said to them, Pastor Peter, Rob Palmer, the Holy Spirit said to me, I must not go ahead. Not go ahead. And that we will know on Friday, sorry, this is uh, Tuesday, we will know on Friday, four days later, or three days later, why we may not go ahead. That's what the Spirit of God said. Tell them you will not go ahead now. You don't have a release in your spirit, but you will know why we're not to go ahead on Friday. We'll receive the news and know why God's delaying this project. And so I told that to them. Then Rob Palmer said to me, now here's my wife's stepfather, married to Sheila Palmer at the time. 
It says to me, Theo, you don't understand. I said, what do you mean, Rob? We're good friends. He and Sheila Palmer gave me permission to marry this beautiful lady, so I have to <laughs> treat him with respect. You understand that, right? So, so he says to me, Theo, you don't understand. So I said, what do I understand, Rob? And he told me all these people in the boardroom, which I already knew. <laughs> then he says to me, we've got the money in the bank for this project. And the city and the state have given us con uh, contracts or letters or whatever it is to say, go ahead and the whole project's been approved by the city and the state. What doth hinder thee? We need to start right now with this. Time is money. So I said to him, Rob, put the phone down, go and tell those people I don't have a release to do this and you will know why on Friday. That's what God says. I don't know more than that right now. Go ahead. And I said, goodbye. <laughs> so Pastor Peter tells me that they went into the boardroom. Pastor Peter made the announcement. The people were very disgruntled. We're not on Friday, why? They were unhappy. And then when they're all gone, Pastor Peter turned to Rob Palmer and he said, look, I understand why Pastor Thea has done this, but he has made strange decisions like this in the past. And I can tell you right now, every time he's done something weird like this, it's always been right. Let's wait till Friday. So Friday came around, Pastor Peter Cox is in his office and the phone rings about two o'clock. It's a phone call from our projects managers on this land all the graders had finished their work. The land levels are all perfect for construction. And he's here just wrapping up a few little things. And walking onto the property comes a government official and the police with a court document from the court. And they handed it to us and they said, you have got to vacate this site immediately. This is a government official from the environmental department and he's got an official document from the court to say, if you don't get off this property immediately, you will be fined, the church will be fined one million rand and the leaders will be put in jail. And I'm not ready for a cell ministry just yet. <laughs> so, they said the environmental department has not approved this construction and there's a lake, a little lake that comes in seasons here, close by. <laughs> about a kilometer away or so, or whatever. And there are certain little frogs there <laughs> that need to be there. And this building's gonna upset those little frogs. <laughs> and we cannot have that. Well, since the building's been up, we've been real kind to them. They be, they're very happy. They haven't complained. Anyhow, I'm talking about the frogs. But <laughs> anyhow, so we took this information and we hired the best lawyers in the land that deal with the environmental department. And we said, look, this is the position. We've got city approval, we've got state approval, all this is assigned. Now, who are these guys that come along here from the environmental department, who are they? So we found out that this is a brand new department started by the government in 2005 and that 
the city and the state hadn't even become aware of their involvement in constructions. Otherwise, they would not have given us permission to go ahead without their approval. And since the city and state submit to the government, the government has authority. So we hired these phenomenal lawyers and we said, please solve this problem. And uh, they went to work and they were hitting a brick wall from the legal angle, the legal aspect. Six months went by and they're doing their best without success. And then I called two people I knew, two politicians in two different political parties who are both in government, who are not involved with the ruling political party at the moment. And I spoke to these two friends. One of them is in our church. I don't want to mention his name. I haven't got permission from him to do so. And one is a very good friend of mine. Both of them are wonderful Christians. They both have their own political parties and they both are in parliament. And I said to them, gentlemen, help me. This is our position. So they went to parliament and they lobbied for us. They lobbied for us in parliament and the government gave us mercy and signed the document and said, Chris Furniture, you may go ahead and build your building. So they were very kind to us and they overruled the frogs, praise God. <laughs> now, next time you see a frog, pay it a lot of respect because they're powerful <laughs> creatures in this land. So anyhow, now, <laughs> so anyhow, um, now I wanna ask you this question. If, we had gone ahead and signed the contract on the Tuesday and not waited until the Friday, we would have been paying the construction company as per the contract for six months. It's about a 10 month contract. So we would have paid them for about 60% of the construction of this whole thing while they're sitting back doing nothing. We'd have used up our savings because we also were trusting for a little bit of money to come in during the construction time. So we'd have used up the savings that we had on legal fees and on construction, which wasn't <laughs> happening. And we would have had no savings left by the time we got permission to start building. And then I'd have to come to you and say, a small incident's taking place, <laughs> whereby the frogs have eaten up all of our money. <laughs> and now we want to start again and do another fundraiser. And we'll be waiting another five years before we can build this building. It's all because of the frogs. And you would have said, I fully understand, Pastor Theo. The frogs were a real problem to Pharaoh and they're still around today. And so, so I fully understand. No, you would not have said that. You would have fired me and you would have fired all the leaders of the church and we'd have all been in big trouble. Amen. Are you with me? We would have destroyed this church. I would have had to leave San Antonio and stay here and go to court to fight this case. Family, the devil tried to destroy this church totally and three days was all he needed to destroy this church. Say this, to listen to the voice of God and make God-guided choices is imperative if you are going to be a successful Christian. Say this, 
Hearing God's voice is not all there is to being a successful Christian. We have to use faith. We have to use authority. We have to pray in the Spirit. We have to worship God. We heard tonight we have to tithe. I mean, it's a whole package, right? The Bible says we must do the Word. Be hearers and doers of what? The Word. Not one verse, but the Word. Thank you for watching Dr. Theo's YouTube channel. We will continue to offer encouraging and life-changing highlights from Dr. Theo's past, present, and future series and messages. Please take the time to like and share the videos. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.